Hello, everybody, again. Uh, today is Tuesday. Uh, our cabinet meeting is actually taking place as we speak right now. Uh, I know this is being aired on Wednesday. We're one day ahead uh, of our service uh, right now because we're actually taping this. Eventually, we're talking about live streaming. When that happens, it'll be right on the same day. So these numbers you see, for example, I want to start off. Yesterday, if you look at the video, I said it only went up by one. Well, it went up by 13 now. So now the number is 217. Remember, the number was 204. So we're up to 217. There's an additional death that took place. There's three now that have died from COVID. And one more has also jumped up in the north. Uh, we don't know exactly where. Uh, that's the part I raised with, uh, with many of you that I, I struggle with. I'm trying to convince. We're writing a letter. In fact, the cabinet decided today a letter will be going to the Minister of Health for the province of Manitoba that Dr. Rosen needs to somehow work with our Métis government so we can actually better assist our people in the event it does come into your village or your community or your family. So we're trying to figure out how that uh, transition of relationship can happen. We just hope there'll be a positive reply from the minister uh, to say, yes, we want to work with your Métis government. Uh, we also saw today's paper, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday's paper now, as you, uh, this is here on Wednesday, uh, where the pr province and the premier are looking at getting 100 and something beds established in different parts for a pandemic uh, out, uh, uh, burst of a pandemic issue. Uh, we are two weeks ahead of them. We actually have over 130 bed facility available right now. Uh, when Pagosa will be finalized in a short little while, and Treehorn, we got a 96 bed facility waiting uh, in the event the pandemic breaks loose. We don't have what we don't have, however, is nurses, doctors at this point in time, but we will get them. Well, in fact, we had a dialogue with Toronto yesterday, Toronto doctor firm, uh, that we're working with trying to see if we can establish some relationship. And we potentially may have a couple doctors here in Manitoba that will be working with us. So when we move forward, I'm very proud of our Métis government. We're two, two weeks and more and then more ahead of the province. And uh, I don't have the multi-billions of dollars, but we're doing our darnest to make sure we're prepared for our people and for all Manitobans. And I made that very clear already. So uh, I'm not here to beat down the Premier, but I'm just showing you how your cabinet is actually working in, 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 a, in, a, in a strategy that we're trying to do everything we can. As I promised to each and every one of you, we'll lift every rock and look underneath uh, every bridge and every, every rock that we have to, to find your solutions to help you in, your, in, in any way we can. Now, support is going out to a lot of our committees. Uh, I want to start off by thanking all those committees that have been working for years with us, volunteering, sitting as uh, I set committee, for example, all the thousands of people that have got training, tens of thousands to be sincere with you throughout the years. We have a committee that works for volunteers that work out uh, and, and give us the direction and how we expend uh, the countless uh, tens of millions of dollars every year that we're spending on our training. So we're actually supplementing with some support of essentials right now for resources to help their families. Same thing with the child welfare. We have boards that sit out there uh, that work again on a volunteer basis, the authority boards. We're also supplementing them with some financial resources right now to take care of their families. They're always taking care of us, but on behalf of the government, we need to start saying thank you and take care of them. We also just now passed in cabinet, we will be also supporting all the locals and the executive of those locals to make sure those are the ones that are actually working right in the grassroots level that are still working right now, helping us in any way we can, whether it's getting names and or helping us even deliver hampers. Uh, so those locals are still diligently working hard out there and sharing information with us what's happening in the community. So we're actually just passed uh, a cabinet uh, directive that each of those local executives will be getting some financial support from the Federation to help them in their own personal family as they keep on working, trying to help your local and your community get in a better state. So again, I want to thank each and every one of those local executives and make it very clear your cabinet will never forget you. The other part that's been drawing great attention to us and we had this dialogue in cabinet uh, yesterday uh, is this whole issue uh, that, you know, we've been going to regional health authority meetings. Uh, we're also the First Nation Inuit health branches there from Canada. And we've been echoing sentiments of very strong positioning where the Métis fit into this plan. We have the federal government sitting at the table, we have the provincial government sitting at the table, and both are denying who's responsible yet for us today. Even during through this crisis, you would think that'd be the farthest from, from the position taken by either government. But still to this day, when we keep on implying, okay, what's the Métis plan? What's the Métis plan in Manitoba? Both are denying there's a plan. Both are saying, no, no, it's Canada's responsible. And Canada's at the table saying, no, no, province, you're responsible. So we got this in minutes, we got this in emails now. We're verifying that this cannot unfortunately be happening. In a, in a, in, when we at the Métis government are saying, we are opening a pandemic uh, uh, bed uh, facility of potential 136, I think, bed facility for all Manitoba. 
We're looking at it, we're, gonna, we're there together, all Manitobans, all Canadians. And yet, even during the COVID crisis, the discriminatory practices are still being applied against the Métis. You wouldn't believe it. I don't, shouldn't, I don't believe it, but it's facts are facts and they're there. So that's something our cabinet is trying to figure out. And what we're coming clearly to the conclusion is this, the Métis, you're on your own. We're on our own as a government. We need to work stronger. We need to work together. And we need to help each other and support each other. And that's something we've done for several hundred years now. It shouldn't stop us from where we're going 100 years from now forward. So it looks like the battle is still existing, and I, I feel so bad about it. I hate talking about this during COVID, but it's truly happening. Because the reason I'm echoing this sentiment to use this, when we react, uh, for example, if it hits your villages, uh, we're writing, a, for example, I'll give you an example. We're writing a letter right now to the Frontier School Division, which impacts many of our villages in rural Manitoba. And many of our students in the communities are affected by Frontier School Division. So we're writing them a letter asking them if something was to happen in that community, given there's no resources, no medical clinics, no nurses, no doctors for the Métis, and no plan by the province, no plan directly by Canada, how can your system help us? Can we use your gymnasium? Can we use your school? Can we use it as a, as a place of emergency? And, and we'll pay if necessary. What we're hoping the answer is going to come back, yes. I'll keep you briefed on that, but that letter has gone out yesterday by the minister asking what do we do when it comes into our village and communities. We do know that First Nations are getting support from, from FINIB, which is the First Nation Inuit Elk Branch for Canada. That's a guarantee. They're getting support. And I'm very happy for them. Trust me, I'm sincere about my words. I'm very, very happy for them that they're getting that support. But I do tell you this, Métis Federation and Métis citizens in our province, we're on our own. And so we need to work together and be strong together. That's why your cabinet is meeting every Tuesday. Our vice presidents are meeting every three days. Our management's meeting every day. And we're continuing to move our agenda forward to make sure we can help. I know checks are being issued uh, right now to all those employees. They went out. As far as I understand, there's 100 and some checks already gone out uh, to bridge these finances for these employees that have been laid off across the province. Uh, employer checks are going out, and we need to move them out faster. I've been pushing that agenda very hard here. And, but they're going out. And the response we're getting is so positive. I'm so, so proud of our people that the smallest of help we give, they're still so appreciative of it. And I really, really touches me as president, and I'm very, very proud that we can help in some ways the government. The Ampers, for example, were, and it's getting challenging. We all know it. You all know it when you're shopping. Sometimes the shelves are completely bare, and we, it worries us. But trust me, don't panic on that. The food is there. There is the food in North America that will sustain us right now. There's not a challenge in that issue. What, what we're failing, as I said before on the show, is that trucks are not making it time to bring the new source of, of supplements of whether it's the canned goods or the, the new food or the new vegetables that are missing in the shelves or in, in the particular stores. So we're moving on the agenda to try to figure out. We just signed a deal with Pratt's. We'll probably move to also look at Cisco and looking at how we can start buying in bigger bulk supplies in the event something gets even worse. And right now, knock on wood, there's no wood to knock on, but knock on wood, uh, things will continue to be at a, a steady pace, a very low number. And now we know that there's no Métis being affected. We did get advice today at Cabinet that there's an individual who's not Métis, has uh, is, is been confirmed as COVID, but the wife is Métis living there. So they're trying to keep their distance and protection, and they're telling us they're going to keep us appraised of that. So that's an issue we're watching very carefully, but we have no, of no Métis village yet unless the province knows somebody they haven't told us yet, we do not know of any Métis village that being hit here right now, but we're being prepared and being ready. We're also me meeting still, as I said last time in different shows, we're starting to meet with the meat packers that are out there, these uh, meat uh, uh, stores or what do you call them, butcher shops. Uh, we're working with them, trying to get packages set up so we can actually have them set aside. In our, we have already uh, purchased uh, through a contract of rent to a Métis uh, entrepreneur woman who actually owns freezers and fridges and they're semi, they're not semi, they're little, they're trailers that you can, they're mobile trailers. Uh, and as yesterday, uh, we have great friendship with the uh, Hutterite colonies. I spoke to one of the presidents yesterday and they're looking at their meat uh, plants to have a relationship with the Métis government and we can buy supplies from them and use to get ready in the event it, this, thing, this thing gets worse and before it gets better. So we're, we're getting ready. On another note, I'll close off with this. I want to again express my gratitude to all those who sent positive replies. We're so proud. Without even advertising, we had hundreds of people quickly reacting to the live streaming show that happened on Saturday. The response has made it very clear from our cabinet, which I got approval today, uh, will be every Saturday at 2 o'clock. But we're also having one more day. 
Thursday at 7 o'clock in the evening to have the evening appetite taking place. This Saturday, this Thursday at 7 o'clock, go into mmf.mb.ca. Remember that, mmf.mb.ca. You'll find a section in the corner that says live streaming. Go into live streaming. At 7 o'clock this Thursday, we'll have seaweed. The full band will be here, but of course distancing. And they're going to perform for one hour to keep entertainment and the livelihood and keep this isolation. I know this is confinement. You feel sometimes suffocated to keep you feeling pumped up and happy and that the Métis government is still trying to make your life not only better through food and financial resources, but also through culture and entertainment. So be prepared for that. And we're also now, and I will report probably tomorrow or the day after, uh, we're getting conclusion on, on potential classroom settings that we're going to do through live streaming. That's something I'm working with the Minister of Education for the MMP government right now. And we're looking at a different uh, venues that may come across very soon. We'll announce those in upcoming uh, videos. So check our videos every day uh, and it'll keep you abreast of what's going on at the Federation government. But I can assure you, your staff are working hard, your cabinet's working hard. And every Tuesday, I'm so proud of our cabinet. Everyone shows up to the meetings and I'm, I'm very proud of our cabinet and what they're doing. Your ministers are working very hard for you. So be safe, stay isolated. And if you get those checks of support, whether you're employees, whether you're sitting on committees, make sure we're asking you, encouraging you, one person goes to shop. Only one. The rest of the family stays home. If the wife is going, she knows what to get. If the man is going, he needs a list from his wife because the wife needs to know knows what goes in the cupboards, what goes in the fridges. So if the man is going to shop, make sure you get your list from your wife. But only one will go shopping. The kids will stay home. And as I said, we're going to try and create programs for the kids on our website. So be prepared. And again, thank you for coming into the website, and thank you for supporting our Métis government, and always take care of your elders and your veterans, and that's, that's who we are, it's always our culture. So take care, and uh, MMF's got your back.